welcome back to a new one on this channel and this occasion is the filter from Mog. Everything on this guide is in chapters so if you look at the description or the timeline you can jump to a section or skip the ones you don't want. If you like this guide please like and subscribe and if you have the money and you want to buy me a coffee you can. You have the QRs at the screen or everything is at the description. Alright, so this pedal has five different parts. You have the drive and the output, you have the envelope follower, the main sole of the plugin, which is the filter, then you have the CV controls and the settings panel. So it makes sense that we start with the filter. Now, this is a classic mock filter and I believe I don't need to explain a lot right here. We have pretty simple controls to cut off the different poles, you know, how hard two poles or four pole. And then we have the resonance control. The resonance is all the way down and the cutoff is all the way up. I'm going to be playing some kick and snares, but we're going to be using this on some plugs and, you know, synthesizers and some bass. So for now, I'm just going to be playing the kick and the snare and it sounds like this. Now, even though we are all the way up in cutoff and all the way down in resonance, we are pretty much not doing anything, just inputting. You will see that if I deactivate this, it's cutting some frequencies at the, the top. Now the, listen to the snares, and right here on the spectrum you have the peak from the snare. So if I turn it on, it's gonna chop some of the higher frequencies, even if you're all the way up. And if you go to 4 pole, it's gonna be more aggressive. So by default, this is just gonna make the sound a little bit darker. You need to, you know, take this into account. Okay, so the cutoff, pretty simple control, is gonna cut the high frequencies. If I keep going down, it's gonna keep cutting and cutting and cutting. And then, when we cut, at the break point of where we're cutting, we can boost the resonance and this will create a peak. And now this is a classic mock fil type of filter, going all the way up will give you a tone, yeah. So again, this is a pretty classic control. If we move the cutoff, we are gonna be getting the tone. For pole again, it's going to be a little bit more aggressive. Cut. If I disable the resonance, you can hear that it's cutting a lot more. All right. So the next stage is going to be the drive and the output. Now, again, this is a pedal, right? And it emulates a pedal at least. So when we play it, if we drive the input, which is going to be inputting or driving it harder, we're going to be uh, getting into, to a point that we are going to be getting a little bit of saturation and even distortion. Now, if you go up and drive, you're gonna go up in volume, so you can go down on the output and, you know, gain match. As you keep going up, at some point, the level right here is gonna indicate that you're distorting, you're saturating, which is fine, right? So now you have a filter and you have a tiny little bit of distortion. So I'm gonna go back to defaults. You have the link control. So if you link it going up in drive, is going to automatically uh, kind of a gain match and go down on the output. Now, still, th this plugging does it uh, very well, you know, gain matching. Some other plugins, th they don't work that, that well. This one, it's good. You go up in drive, it's going to go down in output. Right. Still, you can unlink and it's going to remain on the same position so you can adjust the output make it louder or just make it softer. All right. So this is the second section that you have on this pedal. And it's, again, super important. Now then you have the other side, which is going to be the envelope follower. Okay, so the envelope is an envelope follower. It will listen to inc the incoming signal and it will react to it by outputting some kind of a modulation, some kind of instruction. In this case, that instruction by default is going to modulate the cutoff. So we can listen to something and then the cutoff is just going to be moving, you know, accordingly. It's still, if you're starting and you don't know what an envelope follower is, it's just an instruction. And I'm going to give you a more visual example. If I take you to my DAW, I'm using Bitwick. It's going to be this one. And if I play it, notice that the envelope follower is generating a waveform based on the input, which is, you know, the kick and the snare. So if I wanted to modulate the cutoff with this instruction, I can map it and then we are using that instruction to modulate the cutoff following whatever envelope that we get. That's why it's envelope follower. In the case of the plugin, we are doing this, right? We're going up and down following the sound. Now, this is the main purpose of this envelope. We don't need to do it from the DAW. We can do it from the plugin directly. 
So if I plug it, we need to provide an amount. If I go up, it's going to start reacting and modulating this cut of control. It's going up and down just like this, right? This is what we are getting. If I go again, all the way up the, all the way uh, to 10, it's going to be a little bit more aggressive. Now still, it's not super, super aggressive. Right here at the bottom, you can see the env light. This will tell you how strong the envelope is. Now, all of this depends on whatever signal that you're using. We can drive if you wanted to, and it is that now is a little bit more reactive because we are inputting more signal. So the envelope is going to be a little bit more aggressive. And that's why the input is super important. Right? If I go down on the envelope, on the amount, we are doing no modulation. Now, right now, if I go up, we are going from this point up and then back to the beginning. That's how the modulation works. Now, if I go up, what we can do if we go negatively, we are doing the opposite instruction. We are going from this point down and then back up. All right. Now, for now, I'm just going to put it in a positive modulation. I'm going to cut frequencies. And this goes up and then back to the original position. And then you have the other options. Now the mix control is like a blend control. We are kind of a driving hard right here. We have a hard instruction with the envelope. So we can blend it. This is like a wet and dry control. Even though this is really hard, we can just do less at the point that we get pretty much nothing. So we can, we can fine tune it with the mix control. All right, for now, I'm going to go all the way up to 10. Now, the follow rate, it controls the smoothness of the uh, of the instruction, of the envelope. Right now, it is slow, and we can see it on the envelope light. But it is smooth, right? It's smoothly lighting up, and then it's going off smoothly. And this is because, again, it's slow. If I keep going up, the signal is going to get a little bit harder. And now the instruction is like a non and off. So think of this like, a, like an alpha. You're going to a sine wave, it's just a little bit smoother, but if you go all the way up, it's going to be like a square, so it's a harder on and off. Now we can really hear a change in sound. If I do resonance, again, it's going to be maybe more obvious. Right? It's just like not so floppy, just a little bit more right to the point. Now, all of this matters, the follow rate and everything else. It depends on the sound source that you're trying to process. In this case, if I'm doing a kick and snare, I will go towards to the fast because it's a more percussive type of sound. But if I'm using maybe a synthesizer or a guitar or bass, maybe going to the slow is going to make the envelope a little bit smoother. So it's just going to maybe work a little bit different. But again, all of this depends on whatever it is that you're trying to do or process with this pedal. All right, so these are the main controls, the cutoff, the resonance, and you can drive it and use the envelope to modulate the cutoff. Still, you know, we can do a little bit more. And for now, I'm just going to go all the way back to default values by double clicking the controls. You can go back to default, just like that. I'm going to go cutoff and resonance. And if I play it, it's just going to sound like this because we are cutting by default a little bit. Now, then at the top, you have the CVs. So here you can connect, you can patch maybe different functions or different modulators to modulate different parts of the, of the pedal, not just the cutoff. So if you take a look right here, it gives you the labels of what you can modulate. And below is the attenuators to decide how hard you're going to be modulating this. So you can do the cutoff right here, which is, you know, something that we can do with the envelope, but we can use other sources. And now you can modulate the resonance, the envelope mount, and you can even do the mix right here. So for now, I'm just going to do the resonance because well, why not? So by clicking the ins, it's going to give you some options of what you can do. You can use the side chain to listen maybe to a different track and have it react to that. Or you can use the envelope of the same module. So we can use this envelope to maybe modulate the resonance because we are standing on the resonance. And this is, you know, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to envelope. And now we are connecting the envelope with the resonance. So if I play it, the attenuator will decide how hard the modulation is. Now, in this case, we are doing a little bit of cutoff. And notice that the resonance, it's moving 
accordingly to the envelope. We can make it, I'm going to leave the amount because I don't want to modulate the cutoff, and I'm going to make it fast. Now the attenuator will decide how hard, if I go down on the attenuator, it's going to do less modulation. Oh, I'm doing the wrong attenuator, it's this one, right? So if I stand right here, we have no mod modulation. And the fact that you get a visual representation of how much you're doing, it's, you know, it's cool. You can go up and just get it. Now if you go negatively, you're going to be modulating it down, right? So negatively. So this is what we can do with the resonance in this case, because we are using the resonance. But you can modulate the envelope amount, which is this. You can modulate the mix and you can modulate the cutoff. Now you still have other options and you can do other things with the CVs. In this case, I'm going to get rid of the envelope. You can go to none, it's going to remove it. Now then you have the other option besides the side chain, you have the DC. So I'm going to go to the cutoff and do DC. So DC, it means that you can connect or map whatever to this control and modulate it manually. And notice I'm doing it so. So if I stand on the cutoff and move it, is letting me know right here that, you know, we are modulating this by that much. So what we can do in this case, I can use an LFO from maybe a different source. I can map this attenuator to a modulator on my DAW. So I'm going to go to Bitwig and I'm going to be mapping this control to an LFO. I'm going to use this waveform. It doesn't matter. I'm going to go up and down on that cutoff. And we are successfully mapping that control. So that's why you get the DC. You can connect whatever to this uh, attenuator and then modulate it, you know, up and down or whatever inst instruction that you want to provide. That's the main purpose. That's why you get the DC. Now, right, so you can modulate whatever param that you have right here with the envelope that you have on this plugin or the DC, which is outside of this plugin. Another option is to modulate whatever it is that you have right here with a different pedal, right? So I have an instance of a phaser right here. And this phaser has different modules, right? On this one, we have an envelope follower, but on the phaser, we have an LFO. So we can use this module, the LFO from a different pedal and this one will recognize that we have a different mock pedal and it's going to use whatever LFO that we have on this one. This is, again, super cool. So I'm going to go to CVs and let's say that I want to modulate the cutoff, but not with the envelope and not with my DAW. I want to modulate it with this LFO. So when we click it, notice that it says right here, LFO from 103S. It's going to be this one, right? So I can map it. So the ins is going to show you how it's receiving the modulation and I will need to maybe do something so we can modulate. If I play it, we get it. Now notice that the phaser is active. So we are processing the sound. If I turn this off, we can disable the phaser, but still you're going to be getting the LFO instruction. Notice that we are getting it right here. And this of course will react to the phaser LFO. We can LFO sync on the phaser and just get it. Cool. Now, on top of that, if you click again right here, you can make it bipolar. Right now, it's unipolar. It goes from here all the way up and then back to the same position. But if you make it bipolar, you can go up and down, positively and negatively. Right? So cool, you have different possibilities, right? You can modulate it with the envelope, you can modulate it with the DAW, or you can use other pedals from the, you know, the same, the same uh, team, let's say. Let me just disconnect this, I'm gonna say none. And then we have the other options, which is gonna be the uh, settings. Now on some of the other pedals from Mach, you might have a lot of options, like the delay, you have a you know a million options. Uh, on this one, you don't have a lot. Now, by default, the envelope follower that we get right here is going to be mono. It means that it might be receiving maybe a stereo sound source, but the envelope that it generates is going to be mono. It's the same for left and for right. Now, the plugin, it outputs, if you're using stereo, a stereo signal. So by default, the, the pedal is stereo, but the envelope is going to be mono, just one single instruction for left and the right. But you can change this. If you're using a stereo signal that is doing something in the left and something in the right, this, by changing the envelope, is going to be listening and generating an envelope with whatever you have on the left and then a different envelope with whatever you have on the right. And this is why you also, when you go to CVs, you have left 
and right channel, right? So you can modulate the left and the right differently. So if I go back, then I'm going to go back to mono, and then you have the response, which is going to be the envelope. It's going to be exponential, which is what you get by default, or smooth, and it's going to just make uh, the envelope a little bit more smoother. Now, this is something that you will need to, you know, go to settings and check how it sounds when you do the modulation and change to exponential and smooth and see how it sounds. So it really depends on whatever sound that you're trying to process. Right, so I'm going to take you to my DAW. I'm going to do a little bit of processing on some other sound sources. For now, just we have, we have the drums. I'm going to keep it something like that. Now, it's a little bit too dark for me. Maybe I'm going to drive it a little bit just to get a little bit of that, uh, you know, tiny little bit of saturation. But the cutoff is way too much, right? Even if I turn it off, we are trimming a little bit of the high, harsh frequencies, which is something I like. So I'm going to leave it just like that. It's like just turning the pedal and having it and having it go through, you know, all the circuit. And I kind of like it, right? Super bright, less bright. Now I'm going to be going to some plugs for now. I'm just going to solo and I'm just going to go up in volume. So these are the plugs. If I combine it with a kick and the snare, this is what we get. And I'm going to open the filter and see what we get, what we can do. So right now it's just default and it's not active. So I'm just going to active. So maybe I can use a little bit of drive because, you know, I like it. A little bit less output, a little bit of resonance, maybe four pole. And I want to do a little bit of modulation with this by following the envelope follower. So we're going to go to the amount. Kind of like it right there. And it is, the, it's a little bit slow. I'm going to go to the fast. Right here, you need to go by ear. I kind of like it right there. Now, if you are doing something right here, you want to tone it down. Remember, you can go down in the mix. It's going to be less aggressive. So I'm going to be making it a little bit less aggressive. Now, if I turn it off, it's fine, right? But, you know, I want to make it darker and push it to the back. Okay, so I have a bass right here. This is how it sounds. I'm gonna solo. It's just a single note. Pretty boring. So when I stand right here, this is a Bitwig synthesizer. I'm gonna enable the filter. And just by default, we're gonna be just chopping. So I'm gonna maybe chop a little more, give a little bit of frequency, you know, a little bit of resonance. Maybe I'm gonna be driving it a little bit less output. Now, why not using the CVs to do the cutoff, right? So I'm going to bring the phaser and at the top, notice that we are getting the phaser and, you know, this is something I want. I love basses with phasers and, you know, flangers and all that. It's just classic type of sound. I'm just turning it on. Now we are want to use the LFO from this so we can use, you know, the cutoff of the phaser. So I'm going to find it right here, LFO. You can use the attenuator. Uh, I'm going to be doing something like that. Now, well, let me just play the whole thing. We can maybe go faster or do LFO sync. There you go. And that's how easy it was. This was. So, nothing. A little bit of grit. A little bit of phaser magic. Maybe get something, you know, a little bit better. Cool. Let's drive it more. Why not? To the point of distortion. Or maybe a little bit, you know, distortion. Hopefully, now this is not a review, it's just a tutorial about the plugin, so you can understand how to use it, that's all. So if you uh, liked all of this and you now uh, understand how the plugin works, uh, remember to like and subscribe. And if you have the money and you want to buy me a coffee, you can. Go to the links at the description, you have links for PayPal, YouTube, thanks, and you have Patreon, and also you have the QRs at the screen. Alright, so see you on the next one.